Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Hey there! Today, we're diving into something pretty fascinating yet often overlooked – Mercury switches. If you've never heard of them, don't worry. By the end of this video, you'll not only know what a Mercury switch is, but you'll also understand how it works and where we use them. I know, switches aren't usually the most exciting thing to talk about, but Mercury switches have been used for decades in some cool and unique ways. They have an interesting story behind them that might surprise you. So what exactly is a Mercury switch and why is it still relevant today? Let's break it down. First off, let's tackle the basics. A mercury switch is a type of electrical switch that uses liquid mercury to open or close a circuit. Sounds fancy, right? But it's actually quite simple once you understand it. It's essentially a small tube with a drop of mercury inside. Mercury, being a liquid metal, is conductive, meaning it can carry an electrical current. That's what makes it so handy in a switch. Now imagine this little tube, placed at an angle. When the switch is tilted one way, the mercury slides over and connects two metal contacts inside the tube. This allows electricity to flow, closing the circuit. When it tilts the other way, the mercury moves away from the contacts, breaking the circuit. It's that easy. It's just liquid metal flowing to either make or break an electrical connection. In a nutshell, a mercury switch is a device that relies on the movement of mercury to either complete or interrupt an electric circuit based on how it's positioned. Now that you get the basic idea, let's look a little deeper into how it works. Think of the mercury inside the switch as a tiny metallic blob, kind of like those silvery liquid blobs you might have seen in science class. This mercury is sealed inside a glass or metal container with one or more pairs of contacts. Depending on how the switch is oriented or tilted, the mercury either flows to touch the contacts, completing the circuit, or it pulls away, breaking the circuit. Let's visualize this with a simple example. Imagine a mercury switch in a thermostat. When the thermostat detects that the room is too cold, the switch tilts and the mercury rolls over connecting the contacts. This tells the heating system to kick on and warm up the room. Once it reaches the right temperature, the switch tilts back, breaking the circuit and turning off the heat. It's an incredibly basic concept, but mercury switches have been used in all kinds of applications for this exact reason. They're reliable, low maintenance, and operate smoothly in different conditions. Okay, you might be wondering, why use mercury? Can't you use any old liquid metal? Well, mercury has some pretty special properties. First, it's liquid at room temperature, which makes it easy to move inside the switch. Second, it's an excellent conductor of electricity, so when it touches those contacts, it allows electricity to flow with minimal resistance. Another key reason is mercury's density. It's heavy for a liquid which means it stays put and doesn't evaporate or spread around like a lighter fluid might. This gives the switch reliability, even in environments that are a bit bumpy or shaky, perfect for applications like thermostats or even in older car engines where vibration is common. So where do we see mercury switches being used? The answer might surprise you. One of the most common places you'd find them is in older thermostats, like we mentioned earlier. These switches helped control the temperature in homes and buildings for decades. Their simplicity and durability made them a go-to option for HVAC systems. Another major application was in tilt switches for safety devices. For example, older car trunks used mercury switches to activate the trunk light when you opened the lid. It worked perfectly because when the trunk was tilted open, the mercury would connect the circuit and turn the light on, close the trunk, and the circuit would break, 
turning the light off. You could also find mercury switches in anti-theft systems, where any movement of the car could trigger an alarm. Then there are industrial applications. Mercury switches have been used in machinery, power tools, and even in some older aviation systems. Their ability to function well in harsh environments, whether it's high temperatures, vibrations, or other challenging conditions, made them a solid choice. However, because mercury is toxic, its use in modern devices has been reduced in favor of more environmentally friendly options. That said, they still pop up in legacy systems and specialized equipment. Like many technologies, mercury switches have seen a shift. Today, they're much less common because of health and safety concerns surrounding mercury exposure. Mercury is hazardous if it's released into the environment or comes into contact with people. If a switch were to break, you'd have a potentially dangerous situation on your hands. Because of this, many modern switches use alternative designs like solid-state relays or optical switches, which can perform the same basic function without the need for toxic materials. But for decades, mercury switches were a critical part of many industries, and they still have niche applications today. So, there you have it. Mercury switches may seem like a small, old-school piece of technology, but they've had a big impact. From helping control the temperature in your house to lighting up your car's trunk, they've been quietly doing their job for years. And while their usage has declined in modern times due to health and safety concerns, they still have a place in certain specialized applications. Next time you think about how switches work, remember this little liquid metal wonder that's played such an important role in our technological history. Thanks for sticking around and learning something new with me. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.